What's up guys, it's Joe the Pro here, back at it again with another video. Before this one starts today guys, I need you to please drop a like on this video, hit subscribe, and hit the post notification bell. Today what I'll be showing you is some common calls that are known to happen on the AMF 8230 pin spotter model. I staged about 10 different calls that you can get, or some of the most common calls that you'll get. And we will be going through each lane and I will be showing you how to fix it. The calls can vary from just a ball being stuck to a sweep being down and all the way to a sweep being knocked off of the track due to a ball striking it when it was down in the guard position. First and foremost, one of the most common calls you'll get on a AMF 8230 is a ball being stuck, especially if you have not upgraded from the vertical ball lift system. And then when you add the clutch modification to the equation, it makes the whole ball return issue even worse. Because as you'll see, the bowler knocked down nine pins and there's only one left standing, but those nine pins are now currently sitting in the bottom of the pit. Since the pinwheel is not moving, they have nowhere else to go. Therefore, the probability that you have pins blocking the ball exit is greatly increased. As you see in this example, the pin is actually wedged between the ball and the ball door and even on the plow on the back. In order to fix this issue, you will need to remove the pin from the area clear the surrounding pins away from it as well. Now you will just be left with the ball sitting at the door waiting to go through and you will need to activate the ball return solenoid in order to let the ball return back to the baller. Another common call that you may get on a AMF 8230 pin spotter looks sort of like this. The bowler will throw both shots and the sweep will return to its guard position but no pins will spot. There are several types of ways that this can happen. On this particular machine, the sweep is sitting at its guard position due to an extra pin being fed into the spotting table. In order to clear this, you will need to enter the machine cautiously and remove the pin or however many pins there are that have been fed extra in order for the table to spot the pins, the distributor will need to be positioned at the seven pin cup. You can do this by carefully grabbing both rods on the side of the distributor and pulling it back towards the seven pin. This will allow the table to spot all 10 pins on the deck and your issue is clear. This is another ball return issue. As you can see, a bowler threw the ball and left a spare. However, there are multiple balls that are protruding out of the ball exit. This means that there is something blocking the ball from passing through the exit onto the ball lift. I am now behind the pair of lanes that the balls are stuck on, and it seems that there is a pin in the ball exit. As you can clearly see from looking above the machine, there is a pin wedged between the lift rods and where the bowling ball is. You will now need to come back behind the machine and try to get as many of the bowling balls out of the way as possible. Sometimes you may not be able to reach the very first ball that the pin is wedged against. It is a great help if you can move some of them out of the way. And now, with the solenoid shut, that will keep the ball out of the way. But now as I'm looking deeper in there, you can see there is a ball wedged in the lift and in between the pin. In order to dislodge the pin from the lift rods, if there is a bowling ball stuck behind it, you can use your hand and move the belt backwards 
to relieve some of the pressure that the bowling ball is putting up against the pin and the belt. As you can see, I have now positioned myself in the pit area of the lane where the ball jam has occurred, and now I have perfect access to the pin that is wedged between the lift rods and the ball. With being here, it is now very easy for me to go ahead and reach the pin and lift it up out of there. Throw the pin in the pit. And now, once I clear myself from the machine, I can turn it on and the ball will hopefully go up the lift and back to the bowler. Now, when I restore power to the machine, the ball will go up the lift and if there are any other balls that are sitting in the pit, you'll want to lift on the solenoid lever and let the remaining balls pass through. As you can see, the next call that we are on is another sweep down. In this instance, it appears that the machine has fed an extra set of pins on top of the existing set that has been fed earlier in the spotting cups. This is a common occurrence with the clutch modification or if you have a bad toggle on the elevator wheel. The way to clear this is very simple. You carefully enter the machine and stand on the bar and any excess pins that are in the rack you will want to remove. Now that I have cleared the accessible pins from the spotting table, you can see that there is one pin that is wedged between the distributor clutch lever and the table. To remove this, you simply need to remove the plug from the back end motor that will shut off the distributor belt along with the carpet and ball lift. All you need to do is place your hand on one of the distributor rods located on the left hand side, pull the distributor back, relieving the pressure from the pin and the table, and then you can remove the pin from there. When you insert the plug into the back end motor, this will turn the power back on to the distributor. You simply need to finish clearing this call by moving the distributor back to the seven pin spot. You can do this as long as the distributor is on the track, which it is in this case. So simply index the trip lever with your hand until you return it to the seven pin position and then it will spot pins. That concludes this call. As you can see on this machine, there's a terrible pin jam behind the pin counter which is obstructing the distributor belt, preventing pins from traveling through. You will want to quickly unplug your back end motor, and you will simply want to just remove the excess pins located at the front of the distributor belt by removing them, dropping them into the pit. When it comes to a situation like this, remove the pin that is below the pin that is jammed in the pin counter threshold and once you do that your jam is cleared but keep note of where your pin counter is numbered make sure you have 10 pins in the table in this case we don't so I'm going to place the pin counter at the number zero plug the back end motor and which will energize power back to the distributor and the entire back end of the machine. Rotate your pin elevator wheel and throw pins in the cups that are missing. Pins. Once you have all 10 pins in the table, 
you can now index your distributor back to the seven pin side and that will spot a full set of pins and your jam is now clear. As you can see in this instance, it appears as if a bowler has struck the sweep with their bowling ball and it knocked it off the track while it was moving along the pin deck. Now that I have turned the power off to the machine, I am now sitting in the pit area of this lane. And as you can see on the right hand side of the sweep, this side of the sweep has fallen off of the track. In order to reinstall the sweep plate assembly onto the track, you will need to reposition the sweep to the front end of the machine and out of the back end. When the sweep is located in the 180 degree position, a normal carriage is supposed to be in approximately a 45 degree angle. As you can see on the sweep plate that has fallen off of the track, this is actually backwards. In order to realign the sweep, you will need to crank the sweep back to the front position. Whenever you are using the crank on any of the motors on this machine, you always must remove the plug. Now, insert the crank into the stator of the motor. Now, while monitoring the location of the sweep plate, you will want to crank the motor in whichever direction positions the sweep back to the rear end of the pin deck. And as you can see, if you do it correctly, you can now reestablish the 45 degree angle that the motor is supposed to be at. Once you realign this part of the sweep, you will now want to position your sweep at the front end of the machine because there is a place on the track located towards the front where you can replace the sweep plate onto the track. While you are monitoring the position of the sweep plate, you can use the crank that AMF provides and your knee to kind of assist the sweep in returning to the front position. You will need to notice that while you are moving the sweep back front, it may catch on the sweep rod. So you simply place it in front of it while you are passing, while they are passing each other. When the sweep plate is close to the transition section of the sweep rail, you can lift up the moving bar and if you have the sweep cranked in the correct position, you can actually place the plate back onto the rail. This may take several tries, especially if you are doing this alone. But once you get it started onto the track, it makes the process a lot easier. Some advice is to push on the sweep bar, keeping the, the bearing straight on the track. This will make it easier to get it back on the sweep rail. And as you can see, by following these steps, your sweep is back on the track. But do not forget to 
place your transition bar down. Once you get both sides of the sweep back on the track, you can now remove your crank from the stator and insert the plug into the outlet on the stator. Be sure that it is twisted correctly. Now, when re-energizing power to the machine at the switch panel, only turn on the B switch to start, just in case your motors aren't zeroed out on the chassis, preventing an interlock. Now turn them on one at a time. You will then turn your S switch on. Once you turn your S switch on, your sweep is most likely not going to move. Since I staged this issue, my chassis is already zeroed out. Normally, when the sweep is not at its home position, you will need to press the red button on the side of the stator. Once pressing that, that will restore power to the motor. You will want to zero out your chassis by pressing the zero button. And now this will allow you to return the sweep to its home position by using the cam. After the sweep is returned to its home position and your chassis is zeroed out, you can now turn the power back on to your table motor. Now on this machine, you can see the sweep is down and is waiting for the spotting table to set the 10 pins on the deck. The reason why it's not is because the distributor has appeared to fallen off of the track. And as you can see, it is not at the seven pin position. You will want to turn the power off to the pin spotter so that you can realign your distributor on the track correctly. You will want to go on the service bar here. You can lift the distributor up off the table by lifting on the rod on the left hand side. And you will want to move your distributor to the seven pin position. If you look at the bottom where the set of gears are on the distributor head, you will see that there are a few gears and then you will locate a bearing that goes on the bottom. This bearing rides on the inside of the distributor track on top of the table and the gear goes on the outside of the track. You will simply want to place that gear approximately on the corner of the track and we will adjust the position once we re-energize the machine. As you can see on this machine the pit curtain has appeared to fallen down from the lower table rods. To correct this issue, you will want to cycle the machine and turn the power off as soon as the table reaches its lower lowest position. Now that I am in the pit area of the pin setter, I can now get my curtain rod and reinstall the hooks onto the brackets that are located on the lower table rod. So simply lift up your curtain and install the hooks on either side. And it makes it extremely easier to install the hooks when your table is in the down position. Now when re-energizing the power to the pin spotter, since the table was down in the spotting position, it may not want to go up on its own. You can simply move the table up by lifting on the table cam, place on top of the machine to the left of the, suite of the table motor, and it will return to its home position. And then to start pin feed, you simply will just place a pin on the distributor and it will go from there. As you can see on this machine, this is just a terrible pile up that has occurred on top of the table. And this one is fairly straightforward. 
you will just want to clear the pins that are on top. And if there are any pins that are missing from the spotting table, you can just put the pins in the cups. If after clearing the jam, you're still missing pins from the table, simply grab one from the pit, throw it in, and once you have all 10 pins, position the distributor on the seven pin side, and it will set the pins. On the last machine here, it appears as the distributor failed to index at the five pin position and it misfed a pin on top of the five pin that was already in the cup. This is a fairly simple call to clear. You will just want to index the distributor to the next position, remove the extra pin, place it on the belt in front of the pin counter because remember your pin counter is already at zero. Place the pin on the belt, let it feed and once the distributor returns to the seven pin position, it will spot the pins. And once the table comes back up, your pin feed will be restored. As you saw in the content shown in this video, this covers most of the calls that can possibly occur on the AMF 8230 pin spotter. By conducting normal maintenance of these machines, you can greatly reduce these calls significantly. If you have any questions regarding anything that was not covered in this video, please comment them down in the description below and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Please make sure you subscribe to our channel, hit the post notification bell and drop a like on this video and we will continue to portray videos on this topic. Please like, subscribe, and peace, and don't forget to do it like a pro. We'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.